Roasting the Konoha 11 Sakura Sakura is named after the Japanese flower, Sakura, which you can tell because she's pink and soft and absolutely useless. Sakura is so useless, she gave birth to an Uchiha who needed glasses. Sakura is so useless that she's not even the strongest ninja whose name ends with Akura. That honor goes to Pakura, whose jutsu makes people shrivel up into husks. Kind of like Sasuke's dick when he sees Sakura. That's why after the war arc, Sasuke said he had to pay for his sins and then married her. Help me! Speaking of marriage, I found out that Kishimoto based Sakura off his wife. So I learned Kishimoto hates his wife. Some people shit on Sakura and think that she's only powerful because of the 100 healings jutsu, when actually she isn't powerful at all. For real though, I, I shouldn't call her useless. If nothing else, she does have the most powerful summoning in the series. And so for these roasts, I'm going to try to say one nice thing about the roast to so y'all don't think I'm just a hater. So for Sakura, I will say that not everyone hates Sakura. Some people actually don't know she exists. Oh, how I envy them. And in case you couldn't tell, the nice thing is definitely in air quotes. You know, you know tied with Sakura in the tuning exams. Oh, what? I have to do more? Okay, fine. L let's talk about the best girl in the series. Loud and feisty, side bangs, and when I see him on screen, there's usually an explosion. But enough about Datara. Let's talk about Ino. Ino had the laziest ninja and the most out of shape ninja on her team and still managed to be more useless than either of them. Shikamaru killed an Akatsuki member, Choji fought the Ghetto statue, and Ino uh, possessed Obito for half a second. Yeah, this girl's more carried than Nezuko. Ino owns a flower shop, which makes sense because like a flower, Ino is pretty and soft and they're almost exclusively for her looks. Hey, you recycled half that joke from the Sakura roast. Oh, you mean like Ino recycled half of her character from Sakura? Let's see, Sasuke obsessed feisty healer who does nothing important except in one arc and is overshadowed by her edgy smart teammate and her kind stupid teammate. Ino is different from Sakura in one way though. Sakura single-mindedly focused on Sasuke while Ino is a thought for everyone. In part one, obsessed with Sasuke. After the pain arc, she says she could fall for Naruto and then she finally ends up with Sai. Yeah. Ino is more desperate for a male body than Orochimaru. Shikamaru. Shikamaru looks like a pineapple who vapes. Shikamaru was the first of his class to become a chunin. He was also the first to have more hair squiggles than completed homework assignments. Shikamaru's catchphrase is What a drag! Which is exactly what Tamari thinks after she and Shikamaru have sex. For real though, Tamari, this, this one's on you. You knew you were marrying someone who would quit after one round. Shikamaru defies tropes, man. He's a genius, but he isn't cocky. He's lazy, but still an awesome leader. Most protagonists protect their wives, Shikamaru needs protection from his wife. Shikamaru said he wouldn't end up like his dad, but he ended up exactly like it. He says he wants an ordinary job, but he's the Hokage's right hand man. Says he wants an ordinary girl, but he marries a literal princess. Says he wants a long, ordinary life. Let's hope that he keeps following in his dad's footsteps and doesn't get that either. You know, if Shikamaru is so smart, why doesn't he just put a kunai in his pocket or someplace nobody else has one? That way whenever he shadow possesses someone, he pulls out the kunai and they just lose. Like, the Hidan shit was really cool, but it also would have worked if he, like, had a sword in a random place and decapitated Hidan with it. But I will say, I'm glad Shikamaru is stupid sometimes, because it's way more entertaining. Chubby, I mean Choji. Some of y'all think Choji is addicted to food. Choji's not addicted to food, man. He's addicted to working hard. Working hard to find food. For real though, I don't want to spend Choji's roast on fat jokes. They're low-hanging fruit. And no, Choji, low-hanging fruit is not something you can eat. People think being fat is Choji's worst characteristic, but it's actually his intelligence. For example, Choji's part of the Akimichi clan, but he's so dumb that when he was a kid, he tried to eat his own mother because he thought she was a kimchi. Choji's so dumb that when someone calls him fat, he turns into a human ball of lard and literally rolls over them. Yeah, way to prove them wrong, Choji. It's a real good thing you got Shikamaru on your team because you're about as sharp as a marble and shaped like one too. I'm serious man, Choji's got shit for brains. Maybe that's not why he wears underwear on his head in part 1. But at least his drip evolves. He goes from this into this, which is a sick hairstyle. The man is like Madara, just without any of the accompanying status, strength, power, intelligence, or respect. And then in Boruto, he looks like that homeless guy who asks for your vape every morning. Before we move on, I will say that it's really cool that Choji turns into a butterfly and flies around the battlefield. Speaking of, butter flying around the battlefield is exactly what Choji dreams of. Edgy, I mean Neji Hyuga. This kid was so annoying in part 1. You're a failure, Naruto. You'll never amount to anything. I'm a genius. I'm gonna wipe the floor with you. You'll never get through my rotation. I have the alternate defense. BOW! Bitch, shut up! And then got hit so hard, he became a better person. But although he was annoying, uh, Neji was right. He was like, the circumstances of your birth determine your success. And then at the end of the show, the strongest ninja are, let's see, this guy has magic eyeballs. This guy's a reincarnation of Ninja Jesus. 
These guys have magic eyeballs and are the reincarnations of Ninja Jesus. This guy had a tailed beast shoved up his ass. Uh, we can't reckon with that ideology. Let's kill him with a stick. And this moment is really controversial, but I'm going to go out on a limb and just say, none of you really understand it. You guys ask, hey, why didn't Neji just use rotation? Why didn't he just use air pong? How did he know that Naruto wasn't a shadow clone? But you gotta remember, Neji's a genius. He clearly predicted the future, saw Boruto, and decided to just head out. For my one nice thing, I will say that Neji really is a genius. And here's the proof. Remember in part one when everyone was like, oh, the Byakugan is the strongest eyeball. They got the ultimate defense, and then the Uchiha pull up to part two with fucking Megazord Susanoo's. This is a little known fact, but Neji actually saw this bullshit and decided to develop the real ultimate defense, his body. Tenten. Speaking of Neji's body, Tenten is the only character in the entire series who can talk with Neji Schlong in her mouth. Seriously, in part one, she literally exists to suck this guy off. Rewatch the student exams and tell me I'm wrong. Tenten's name comes from the fact that she's a 10 out of 10, by which I mean she's a 1. The only fight Tenten won in the whole series was against a clone of herself, and she almost lost that one too. But for all the shit I'm talking about Tenten, you gotta admire her persistence. I mean, against Tamari, the first thing she did was throw out some weapons, which Tamari blew away. So Tenten unleashed her next move, a scroll that threw out some weapons, which, which Tamari blew away. And by now she's realized that the secret to Tamari's strength is a fan, mostly because Tamari told her so, but Tenten then reveals her ultimate move, twin dragons that throw out weapons which Tamari blew away. Yeah, Tenten isn't really the smartest ninja, is she? But, oh well. At least she got almost as much screen time as a swing. Or, I mean, at least she wasn't overshadowed by a pig. Okay, this is embarrassing, let's just move on. Rock Lee. Man, I don't want to roast Lee, man, I love this guy. I gotta do my job though, so here goes. Lee looks like a houseplant flipped upside down. Lee looks like Suni Lee crossed with Jim Carrey in Dumb and Dumber. Lee looks like Mike Guy. And yes, that is a roast. There's a reason Guy is unmarried and it's not just because his lower body doesn't work. Stop calling yourself a handsome devil, Lee. I don't think you know what that word means. You know, Naruto is a real tearjerker of a series. But out of all the sad backstories that exist, it's my firm opinion that the most tragic thing in the series is actually Lee's haircut. Man got the Asian bull cut and never grew out of it. Poor guy. Lee's hair is so bad, it's taken on a life of its own. Hey, Lee's hair. What profession are you? I rest my case. Well, at least Lee teaches you real life lessons. Like, if you work really hard, you too could get crippled for life. Or that if you're given the choice between giving up on your dream and having a 50% chance of dying, you should die. Forget what your parents will think, no, it's, it's way more important to satisfy your own ego because uh, if you die, then your mentor has offered to kill himself too. Real talk though, I will say Lee did have the most realistic life lesson out of them all. In Shonen, there's a lot of lofty and unrealistic shit, like not everyone who wants to be president can become president, not everyone who wants to amount to something will, but Lee taught us a much simpler lesson, that being drunk is fucking awesome. And before I move on, let me know in the comments, if Lee's name was actually Broccoli, would he look like this? Or like this? Let me know, I'm curious. And while you're down there, subscribe! I make Avatar and anime content twice a week and- Nobody cares! Keep up. Alright, time to talk about anime's most lovable dog and human pair. No, I, I, I mean the one from Shonen. No, I mean the one where the dog and human merge into one. I mean intentionally! <sighs> Fine. It's the one where they piss on the battlefield. Yeah, Kiba! Kiba's hilarious, man. This man said he was gonna be Hokage, but got packed up by a fart. And he gets a lot of shit for it, rightly so. But Kiba is much more than the guy who lost to a fart. He also lost to Sakon and Ukon and Naruto. And I know that he lost to Sakon and Ukon in the same fight, and that he lost to the fart and Naruto in the same fight. But Kiba has literally zero other fights and not much screen time, so there's not a lot to roast here. Cut me some slack. But we can talk about his clan though. Naruto has some really cool clans with some awesome abilities. The Nara have their shadow possession, the Yamanaka have Flupthi, and the Inuzuka have dogs. Fun fact, the Inuzuka clan actually evolved alongside their dogs, which means there's a scientific explanation for why Kiba's a little bitch. You know, some of y'all clown Kiba for wanting to be Hokage, but he really has the best policy ideas out of all of them. Too bad, he'll never get to enact them. Hinata. Hinata's the baddest chick in the show, and by baddest, I mean bad at everything. Let's see, she's supposed to be heiress of the Hyuga, but she's less strong than Neji and less talented than her seven-year-old sister. She's supposed to be best girl in Naruto, but Naruto doesn't even notice her until the series is basically over, even though they hold hands in the war. Speaking of, the war arc was really tough for the Hyugas. Not only did Neji die, but even worse, Hinata didn't. Well, at least she's the best Hinata in anime. Oh no, wait, the second best Hinata in anime. Oh no, wait, the third best Hinata in anime. You know what, forget it. Speaking of other anime, remember how I said Ino was more carried than Nezuko? Well, Hinata invented Nezuko. Quiet, black-haired, best girl, 
whose face veins pop out when they're fighting, the difference being Nezuko was actually useful. Meanwhile, the highlight of Hinata's whole character in part 2 is losing to Pain, someone she had no business challenging but she saw him BDSMing her boyfriend and so she had to step in. But I will say one thing, Hinata's the only one who's taken on all of Naruto's shadow clones at once. No way mom, Naruto would destroy her in a fight. Who said anything about a fight? Shino. Honestly, between Kiba and Shino, it's getting kind of difficult to come up with roasts here. These guys are less interesting than Boruto Naruto next generations. Shino is so forgettable that at the start of Shippuden, Naruto straight up forgot who he was. Naruto's whole thing is, I'm gonna become the Hokage so you acknowledge me, so you know who I am, and then he sees Shino and is like, who are you again? Honestly though, I understand why I'm to forget Shino. The guy's out of a freaking horror movie. Let's look at the rest of the Konoha 11. We got Dog, Thought, Obese, Bug guy who will spread insects inside your internal organs. As you feel them squirming under your skin, they explode, ripping your body to shreds from the inside out. Who wrote this guy, man? Dude belongs in the Saw series, not Naruto. Seriously, Shino has thousands of insects in his trench coat and is still the most disgusting thing in there. He is a monster though. Beats Zaku with no difficulty. Beats Konkuro. Doesn't lose a fight in the whole series. And then he loses to freaking Gen and Miski in Boruto, somehow managing to be the only person nerfed harder than Tsunade. I will say one nice thing though. Shino reminds me of one of my favorite artists, Sway Lee. Cool as fuck, classic, gained notoriety with his Black Beatles, and these days is totally irrelevant. And it's at this point that, with most of the roasties concluded, I have to admit that I lied to you. Naruto is not going to be in this video because he's going to be in my roast of the Hokage video that's coming out soon. Sasuke isn't here either because he's technically not one of the Konoha 11, but he'll be in the roasting the Uchiha video. However, in return for tricking you and so you don't dislike the video, I will give you Sasuke from Witch. And if that feels like a shitty consolation prize, well, now you know how Team 7 felt when they replaced Sasuke with him. Sai looks like a lesbian vampire. Sai looks like if Michael Jackson shot that hot topic. Sai uses art because as a child, he misunderstood when his instructor said to draw his weapon. For real though, I, I love Sai. I feel a certain kinship with him. We both have black hair, we both roast the shit out of people like when Sai tells Naruto he has a small dick, and we both make really shitty art. But let's finish up with my nice thing about Sai, which is that he has the real baddest wife in the show, although his inner monologue thinks she's ugly, which proves that Sai has no taste. And if you happen to be like Sai and have no taste, consider subscribing so you can see more of my content. The rest of the Akatsuki and the Uchiha and the Hokage are all in the works, so if you don't want to miss those, you know what to do. Like this video and hit that bell as well, and that's all for today. Until next time. Thank you.